my way down to coordinate search and rescue. On my way down to coordinate search and rescue. I mean, hey there, time travelers and Marvel fanatics. With season two of Loki upon us, we decided to embark on a journey through time, space, and alternate realities to explore the not so well known facts behind the first season surrounding this mischievous god and his adventures. As we gear up for the next chapter in the Loki saga, it's the perfect time to rewind a bit and relive some moments. Only this time, under a different spotlight. As we gather up our excitement for what's to come, let's take a nostalgic look back at some lesser known tidbits that made the debut season shine brighter than, well, the Tesseract. Kicking things off, perhaps one of our favorite tidbits has to do with what we like to call canonized fan theories. Some of you may recall that after Infinity War, there was a ton of speculation on whether or not Loki was actually killed off by Thanos. Fans noticed that Loki grasped his dagger in his left hand and figured this could have been an illusion while the real Loki was off in the background escaping. Season 1 of the show basically confirmed this, if only to a degree, as the main Loki did in fact die, while a variant, the classic Loki, escaped in this exact manner. Moreover, this wasn't the only case of the showrunners listening to the fan discussions, as most of the show's time travel logic was retconned from Endgame's quote, rules, as those were pretty much both to the walls confusing as all hell. The best part, of course, was that they chalked it up to Bruce not fully understanding how the timey-wimey stuff even worked. As for the deleted scenes, there ain't much to go off on, with one exception. In a tweet, writer and producer Eric Martin revealed that there was a sequence filmed wherein Loki was being relentlessly attacked by Trog, aka Frog Thor, as a segment within Mobius' time theater presentation in the first episode. Regrettably, this scene had to be omitted due to concerns about pacing and flow, which is a shame because we would have liked to see a bit more of Loki receiving his karma. That's not all, of course. On the actor side of things, Tom Hiddleston could be considered a bit of a show off. In the episode titled The Variant, Loki delivers a speech in Latin to the inhabitants of Pompeii. Notably, actor Tom Hiddleston's mastery of Latin, cultivated during his time at Cambridge, shines through his impeccable pronunciation. Later, in the Lamentis episode, Hiddleston's versatility takes center stage as he showcases his vocal talents by singing in a fusion of Asgardian, which is essentially Norwegian and English. And on the other end, we also have a bit of irony when it comes to casting choices. For one, actor Richard E. Grant who's afflicted with a genetic condition that renders him literally incapable of consuming alcohol, takes on the role of a character who, you guessed it, drinks a whole lot of alcohol. There's also Owen Wilson's character, Mobius, who serves as a staff member at the TVA, positioned as an individual with comprehensive, if downright crazy, amounts of knowledge of Loki and the intricate details of his life. The irony here is that Owen Wilson's knowledge of the MCU and Loki's journey was pretty much non-existent. To bridge this gap, he participated in what's humorously referred to as quote, Loki School, hosted by none other than Tom Hiddleston, designed to acquaint him with the entirety of the God of Mischief's escapades up until that point. But I will not be bullied by that! Before we close things off, let's go through some mini tidbits. Kate Heron, an immense fan of X-Men and Loki during her younger days, was genuinely excited about the opportunity to work on a series all about the God of Mischief himself. Even though she didn't have much experience before taking on the role of director, her enthusiastic 60-page proposal impressed Marvel so much that she's now not only directing but also overseeing the production of the series. On a similar note, since we started off with mentioning season 2, we have KK Kwan who really loved the first season of the show, so much so that you can imagine how thrilled he is to be a part of the continuation. On the flip side, Tom Hiddleston was also a big admirer of Quan's talent. This mutual appreciation made both Tom and Sofia DiMartino totally on board with having him on set, and we definitely shared that sentiment. We're thankful for your time. Are there any behind the scenes tidbits about Loki that you know of? Tell us in the comment section and don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you're interested in more factoids related to popular shows and movies, especially of the comic book variety. You make a world of difference to us, so we hope to see you again. Different time, same channel.